Sentry vs Juggernaut is an epic matchup that fans would love to see happening. The superhero who has the power of one million exploding suns takes on the herald of the Citorak power. Let's see who would win this epic fight. But before we start our matchup for today, I would like to point out that I am going to list the feats of the regular Sentry only, without going into the feats of his other personas, such as the Horseman of Death. Rob Robert Reynolds, a former meth addict, broke into the lab of Professor Cornelius, looking for some drugs, and consumed the super soldier serum, which was designed to be a hundred thousand times stronger than the original used on Captain America, and was modified by Weapon X. The serum granted Robert vast superhuman powers of million exploding suns, including vast superhuman strength, stamina, durability, healing and speed, which usually vary based on his mental state. In Dark Avengers number 13, it is mentioned that the Sentry's powers may come from a cosmic source, or possibly even from God. His wife, Lendi, believed that his energy came from something of biblical proportions and theorized that modern-day superheroes were conduits through which such higher power was now being channeled. In Marvel Knights Sentry Spider-Man number one, Spider-Man says that Sentry once fought Galactus to a standstill. Although we have never seen this fight, this statement shows how powerful Sentry is. In the Sentry number one of eight issues run, Terex the Tamer, the cosmic herald of Galactus, arrived on Earth in the Ukraine and claimed the planet, remarking that humanity was found guilty of the crime of sentience. He easily destroyed the army's forces until Sentry arrived. As expected, Terex underestimated the Sentry and attacked him with his cosmic blast, but Sentry seemingly absorbed the blast, enraging the Herald, who lunged at him. Sentry blocked Terex's attack, snatched the cosmic axe from his hand, and easily broke it, defeating the Herald. Sentry then told Terex to leave Earth immediately. In the finale of this run, Sentry confronted his dark side known as Void, who told Sentry that they are meant for each other and will remain together forever. Sentry could not take it any longer and attacked Void. The two clashed in a fierce fight where Sentry eventually managed to subdue the Void and to take him into space. Void told Sentry that he can't kill him and that he is Robert Reynolds himself, but Sentry told him that he doesn't need him anymore. Sentry took Void to the sun where Void said that he will not die and and will be back, and will undo everything good Sentry has made while he was gone. Void, whose features became more human, told Sentry that he can't live alone, and that he is too unstable, and that his powers go up and down with his emotions. Sentry told Void that he never needed him before tossing him into the sun. The Sentry was powerful enough to defeat the Void, who in Siege Finale took control of the Sentry, and ripped Loki himself apart when he summoned the Norn Stones and tried to empower the Avengers in their fight against the Sentry. Without forgetting what he did to the Hulk when he broke every single bone in his body in the negative zone, where Void is usually at his most powerful levels. In Civil War The Return, Crusher Creel, aka the Absorbing Man, attacked Sentry and hit him hard with his ball, but Sentry survived without getting harmed, the two then clashed with each other, where Creel addressed Sentry as a god. Sentry told Creel that true power hurts, but Creel, who sensed that Sentry was holding back, told him to let loose. Sentry punched Creel, telling him to submit or he would suffer the consequences. Creel underestimated the Sentry and told him that he could not hurt him, before using his telepathic powers to mess with his mind. Sentry, however, told Creel that it wasn't a good idea to get into his mind. Creel told Sentry that he could not defeat him cause he could absorb his strength, but Sentry said that this was the reason why he was holding back and told Creel that he could not absorb the energy of a single planet, let alone the power of one million exploding suns. Creel tried to absorb the Sentry's true power which he unleashed, but he was easily overpowered and melted atom by atom, 
dissolving into photons, neutrons, and solar wind. However, in the Mighty Avengers number 33, Sentry clashed with Creel, who managed to absorb the power of the cosmic tube and became incredibly powerful. Sentry punched the villain, who did not go down this time. Creel remembered what happened when he tried to absorb the power of the million exploding suns before, but this time it was completely different. Empowered by the cosmic tube, Creel managed to reshape reality and divided Sentry into his two personalities. Sentry and the Void. Sentry is also known of ripping his opponents apart, showing no mercy. In the new Avengers number 2, Sentry confronted Carnage and easily overpowered him. He took him into space with incredible speed and ripped him in half, acting as judge and executioner to Clitus Cassidy. In Siege number 2, Sentry clashed with Ares the God of War in one-sided battle, in which he knocked Ares away with a punch. Ares, however, wasn't damaged and told Sentry that he was mistaken when he thought of him as a friend. Sentry launched at Ares and tried to suffocate him, but Ares managed to knock him away and attacked again. But this time, Sentry went for the killing and ripped Ares in half. In the Mighty Avengers run, Ultron attacked New York City and clashed with the Avengers. Sensing that Sentry was too powerful, he decided to destroy him by killing his wife, brutally mutilating her. Enraged, Sentry attacked Ultron and nearly ripped its head with his bare hands. Although Ultron's armor is usually composed of adamantium, the toughest metal in the Marvel Universe. In the Sentry 5 issues run published in 2018, Doctor Strange created a device called the Confluctor that created a pocket dimension where Robert can go to once every 24 hours to be the sentry and fight the void with scout and watchdog. This would prevent him from turning into the void in the real world. In book number one, sentry fought Void's shadow army who invaded New York City. Void was controlling his army from inside the moon where he was hiding at its very core. Sentry launched himself with great force and destroyed the moon to pieces. He confronted the void who told him that his army was devouring his friends and that he would take control of the world, but Sentry attacked him and ripped him in half before tossing him into the sun. In this run's finale, Sentry embraced his fate and merged with Void, creating the complete Sentry who had black hair and red costume. This Sentry proved powerful enough to overpower the Avengers heavy hitters such as She-Hulk, Captain Marvel, and Thor. At one point, Sentry gained the godly powers of the Molecule Man, as proven in the Dark Avengers number 11 and 12. Molecule Man attacked Sentry, remarking that he has tasted every molecule in the world, but never tasted anything like the Sentry. Molecule Man disintegrated the Sentry, who begged him to stop, but the godlike being told him that if he stopped, he would hurt him, as Norman Osborn told him to do, before destroying him. Sentry, however, reformed himself again and attacked Molecule Man, who retaliated and destroyed Sentry. But this time, Sentry managed to reform himself and took control of Molecule Man's body. Sentry demanded Molecule Man to put everything back in order, cause he had the experience to do that. Molecule Man did as Sentry told him to do, but that did not prevent the Sentry from destroying him. It's worth mentioning that Sentry never used this power ever again. In Punisher number 1, which was published in 2009 as part of the Dark Reign event, Frank shot a bullet at Norman Osborn from a far distance, but Sentry managed to catch the bullet with super speed before locating Frank and confronting him in seconds. Sentry told Frank that he would take him easy or hard, but as expected, Frank ran away and tried to delay the inevitable. He used explosives to slow the Sentry 
Sentry down, but his attempts were in vain. Sentry then managed to capture him, but Frank never gave up and shot Sentry in the face. Sentry dropped Frank 30 feet down, severely damaging him, but Frank did not stay down and tried to run away again. He then shot a container full of acid and dropped it on the Sentry, remarking that the acid is strong enough to melt through steel, but it barely messed up Sentry's hair. In The King in Black number 1, Captain America recruited the Sentry to confront Null the God of the Symbiotes, who invaded planet Earth. Sentry proved powerful enough to rip through one of the Celestials taken over by the Symbiotes and controlled by Null. Sentry then attacked Null and took him into space to rip him in half the way he ripped Carnage. Null, however, proved more powerful than the Sentry, remarking that he knew who he was and what he did to Carnage before ripping him in half. The Sentry can generate powerful energy blasts from his hands and eyes, as proven in his epic fight with World War Hulk, who told him that he did not want this fight, but Sentry told Hulk that he is the only one he can hit without holding back. The battle raged between the two, to the degree that Thing said that Sentry was busting out the power of a million exploding suns, and Reed said that Sentry never unleashed this power before. Sentry told Hulk that he felt good letting loose before pounding on him and blasting him some more, but Hulk pounded on Sentry and made him bleed. Sentry said that he tried to calm Hulk down, but at the end, it's him who could not stop. Hulk told Sentry that they could call him whatever they wanted, but what matters the most is what he chooses to be, before they both revert back to their human forms, where Banner managed to knock Robert out cold. In addition to his incredible strength and durability, Sentry possesses incredible speed that enables him to think, move, run, fly, and react at superhuman speed. He can fly faster than the speed of light, as he once flew from Earth to Saturn before finishing saying no. In addition to his ability to resist mind control, as we saw in his fight against Crusher Creel, Sentry has telepathic powers that enabled him to telepathically communicate with Professor X, who asked Robert about the Void. When Cain Marco found the Stone of Citrak in a hidden temple in Korea, it granted him superhuman powers, including vast superhuman strength, durability, stamina, healing, and immortality. He has been described as as the closest thing on Earth to an irresistible force. In the mighty Thor number 412, Thor confronted Juggernaut in an epic battle featuring the new warriors. Juggernaut challenged Thor to fight him, remarking that nothing can stop him and that he will squeeze the life out of Thor. Thor summoned a huge bolt of lightning and hit Juggernaut with it. The new warriors thought that nothing could have survived that blast, but Juggernaut survived without any damages and said it tickled him, asking Thor to do it again. Thor then unleashed the most terrifying Asgardian power of all, which once hurled back Galactus and gave pause to a celestial. He called upon the god force running in his veins and united with the power of his hammer. Thor blasted Juggernaut with the god blast, which did not stop him, but destroyed the ground beneath him, causing him to fall. The new warriors did not waste the time and trapped Juggernaut in a steel cocoon. Knowing that this will not restrain the Juggernaut for long, Thor used his hammer to open a portal of time and space and banish Juggernaut into a distant dimension, but as expected, Juggernaut broke free moments later, remarking that he will find a way back home and will get Thor. In The Mighty Thor Volume 2 Number 17 by Dan Jurgens, Juggernaut proved to be a formidable opponent again when he fought Thor in the 8th day storyline, taking Thor's blows unharmed. Juggernaut overpowered Thor, who realized that this Juggernaut is way more powerful than before, and attacked again, trying to stop the unstoppable, but Juggernaut managed to put Thor in an unbreakable bear hug. 
Thor admitted that he could not breathe and was about to lose consciousness and maybe life itself had not Bidlam and Conquest appeared and separated them before knocking Thor away. They also warned him not to mess with them again or they would kill him, then teleported away. When Kane gained a complete access to the gym's powers during the Trion saga, it increased his powers a thousandfold. Trion Juggernaut was capable of altering the size of matter, growing in size, levitation, absorbing and projecting energy, increasing his own strength, and creating portals through space-time. In the X-Men Volume 2 number 88, Trion Juggernaut was powerful enough to break down barriers most people do not even know exist, smashing his way into other dimensions, ripping through the fabric of space-time itself. When Kane found the gym of Sitarak in that Korean cave, it turned him into the Juggernaut, just as the cave came crashing down. It took him a long time to dig his way out, but that was a walk in the park for him. After his fight with Spider-Man, who got him trapped in a fresh concrete at a construction site, he sank straight to the bottom and had to fight his way through miles of rock, clay, and stone. He did not need air or food, and finally found his way out, after a month digging his way underground. On another occasion, the fear demon Despair found out the hard way that even reducing Juggernaut to a skeleton won't be enough to stop him. In the World War Hulk run, Kane was one of those who tried to protect Professor X from Hulk when he came seeking revenge against those who were responsible for banishing him. Hulk easily overpowered Cain and smashed him down. Humbled by his defeat, Cain asked Sitarak why he sent him to fight the Hulk without granting him full power. Sitarak told Cain that he was not the one who restricted his power. It was Cain himself who did that. Cain fought the Hulk to save his stepbrother, with whom he barely talked, which was a weak reason, and that's why Cain was weak. Cain should have fought the Hulk to destroy him, and not else. With that, Kane absorbed the full power of the gym. Juggernaut came back for round two and clashed with the Hulk again. The battle raged between the two until they were both locked in a test of strength where nothing can stop the Juggernaut when he is in motion. Juggernaut started pushing the Hulk when Charles came out of the mansion and told Kane to stop immediately as he was undermining the foundation of the mansion, causing Juggernaut to be distracted enough for the Hulk to turn his unstoppable movement against him by redirecting his motion and sending him out of the compound. It's worth mentioning that Hulk was the only one who could stop Juggernaut while he was in motion, out of pure physical strength, when he became more the Horseman of Apocalypse, and was empowered with celestial technology, as proven in The Incredible Hulk number 457 by Peter David. Although considered among the most powerful beings in the Marvel Universe, writers have ruined Juggernaut's legacy by turning him into a jobber, losing to opponents he should have easily overpowered and defeated. Sentry has many advantages over Juggernaut in this matchup, as he can fly and can also move way faster than Juggernaut does thanks to his super speed. Juggernaut, on the other hand, can't move as fast as the Sentry and can't even leap high like the the Hulk to close the distance. It goes without saying that we are talking Juggernaut in his prime here, and not the one beaten by Venom and Deadpool among others. Although Sentry has many advantages, I still do not see how he can physically damage the Juggernaut. If Sentry can't physically damage the Juggernaut, he can still mess with his mind using his telepathic powers. Juggernaut is vulnerable to mental attacks, a weakness that has been exploited via the removal of his helmet, which normally protects him from such. However, Juggernaut has overcome this weakness by wearing a metal skull cap inside his main helmet, and if he lost his helmet for any reason, he can magically recreate it from available raw materials as long as he possesses the full power of the gym. In this case, and if Sentry could not remove Juggernaut's helmet or tear it apart as Hyperion did once and could not telepathically
telepathically control his mind either, then the only way left to stop him is to banish him, the way Thor did before. Sentry could burrow the ground around Juggernaut at super speed, before fusing the silicates in the soil into a steel hard ball, by using the energy he projects from his hands and eyes, in a way that he would not destroy the ground. Sentry then would lift the chunk and take it into space, then would toss Juggernaut into the sun, cause leaving him floating in space won't stop him, as he can magically survive without the need to breathe, eat, or drink. Let me know what you think about this matchup, and don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. Thanks for watching, and have a nice one.